Well, this one's got an M.A. in English. She should be your screenwriter. Sometimes they go along on scouts because they want the free meals. Here's your director. You teach somebody to be a director in a day? You teach a rhesus monkey to be a director in a day. What exactly does a director do? Playback and action. I think this can be difficult to fully grasp from an audience's point of view, because the film they're watching is a complete final product, a little machine that seems to work all on its own. There are, of course, obvious trademarks, video essays like myself, showcasing our videos. I'm sure you know the greatest hits. Scorsese loves crash zooms, Wes Anderson loves a symmetrical frame, Tarantino loves squibs, and Christopher Nolan loves a plot twist or 10. Actors, I must have my actors. But the collaborative relationship between director and actors is often forgotten when we talk about directing. Yet it may just be the most crucial part of the filmmaking process. How important is the actor to you? The, that's, that's number one and everything else underneath. What else do you look at when you look at a movie? Yeah. PTA's hero, Robert Altman, agreed. By the time uh, a film is cast, about 85% of my creative work is finished because the actors have to do it from then on. Anderson believes that characters who are opposites make for great cinema. This is perhaps most clear in his casting of The Master, where Joaquin Phoenix's intuitive, erratic style is contrasted with the deliberate, studied choices of Philip Seymour Hoffman. These acting styles are perfectly tailored to their characters, with Freddie Quell being like a wild animal and Lancaster Dodd the literary master of self-control. There's no one way to direct actors. It's important to tailor your process around theirs. For his complex character study, There'll Be Blood, PTA was more than willing to go on long walks with his method star, Daniel Day-Lewis, discussing and contemplating Daniel Plainview's psychology. I see the worst in people, Henry. I don't need to look past seeing them to get all I need. But I highly doubt he had that same approach with Adam Sandler. I sometimes cry a lot for no reason. Not all directors are as passionate and open as Anderson to the process of acting. <laughs> Alfred Hitchcock tended to see his stars as, first and foremost, bodies in space reflecting light. You called actors cattle once in your career. I would never say such an unfeeling, rude thing about actors at all. What I probably said was that all actors should be treated like cattle. In his hyper-stylistic visual language, actors were the letters that formed his sentences. Working with method actors like Montgomery Cliff, therefore, was challenging for the master of suspense. Sometimes you just need a take of your actor looking left and seeming surprised, even if that doesn't make sense in the moment. Character motivation be damned. He didn't want to have to deal with all that method stuff. And when he asked Cliff at one point to please look up when he came out of the courthouse because he wanted to cut to the windows, Cliff said, I don't know if I would look up. And of course, anything like that would drive Hitchcock crazy. If you don't look up, I can't cut, because it's, again, Hitchcock's point of view cinema. Robert Bresson, painterly and minimalist, similarly treated his actors as models, but for a different purpose. He asked his performers to focus more on the physical motions of their characters. He didn't want them to consciously act. Believing this restraint would uncover more profound emotion, both in them and in the audience. But painting your canvas with carefully curated performances doesn't have to be so rigid. Other directors are demanding, but collaborative too. Rooney, you can really wind up on, yes, there is. That can be extremely pointed so that it really makes him go. I have to stop and note that for a second. That was, seems like another kind of communication, more than just words, which is really where I'm sort of more comfortable in. It's like this whole riptide thing is making me a little freaked out. David Fincher is notoriously meticulous in pre-production, going over every single detail of his often dense scripts with his actors. That counts for the one-liners too. If you guys were the inventors of Facebook, you'd have invented Facebook. On set, Fincher is also a perfectionist, doing countless takes until he's satisfied. But it's nice, you know, because you're, you're with a director who likes to do that many takes, and he's very much a, a perfectionist. So if he doesn't think it's right, he's going to keep going until he gets what he wants, which is, as an actor, the most comforting thing you can hear. You know, I feel very protected in this. He makes his actors part of his process constantly talking to them and letting them try different things. 
Every option is explored and nothing is left to chance. Directing becomes the unearthing of a scene. Everyone's shoveling together until they hear that sweet, magical word. Cut. We got it. From now on, you will speak only when spoken to. And the first and last words out of your filthy sewers will be sir. Do you maggots understand that? Before Fincher, the obsessive multi-take king was, of course, Stanley Kubrick. But contrary to Fincher, Kubrick often kept his distance from his cast, refusing to get too specific about what he wanted from them. He doesn't care about the motivation. He cares about it in the way that it better be right to tell his story properly. But he doesn't want to talk about it. Show up, know your lines, don't bump into the furniture. Basically, that's it. The kitchen scene between Danny and Halloran in The Shining took over 100 takes, but reportedly without Kubrick giving much input. Perhaps the repetition was meant to put the actors in an uncomfortable mood to match the ambiguous tone of the film, between realism and folly. Or perhaps he just wanted to drill certain contrived performance elements out of his cast. I don't know. There was a similar scenario in Full Metal Jacket. When shooting the film, an exasperated Adam Baldwin asked Kubrick, what do you want? To which the director simply replied, better acting. By frustrating him, the drill sergeant director got his animal mother to act even more animalistic. Infamously, Kubrick also psychologically mistreated Shelley Duvall for her turn in The Shining, helping her to achieve a hysterical performance. Oh, come on, what do you mean roll Two video? Seconds. We're fucking killing ourselves out here and you're gonna be ready. I am too, I'm standing right Should we play right mood music? Door. Although he may not have seen his actors in the same dehumanizing way that Hitchcock did, he did play with their emotions for dramatic effect and sometimes with little care for the person behind the role. So I resented Stanley at times because he pushed me and he, it hurt. And I resented him for it. I thought, why do you want to do this to me? How can you do this to me? You know, you agonize over it. And it's just a necessary turmoil to get out of it what you want out of it. I mean, we had the same end in mind. It was just that sometimes we differed in our means. Here's Johnny. Steven Spielberg admitted to at first not understanding the exuberant, crazed performance that Jack Nicholson gave in The Shining. Kubrick retorted that one of the greatest actors ever was James Cagney, whose emotional extremes highlighted rather than obscured his character's truth. Broad strokes can be as affecting as delicate brushes. One of the things he said to me that I've, I've always remembered was in movies, you don't try and photograph the reality, you try and photograph the photograph of the reality. I knew it wouldn't be a performance about idiosyncratic behaviorism, but that it would be, I always thought of it as balletic. On the flip side of these obsessive manufacturers or controllers of reality are filmmakers who only want to capture the magic of the real as it unfolds naturally. Clint Eastwood started as an actor, so it isn't surprising that as director, he privileges the imperfect rawness of a first impulse over the greater precision of a second attempt. I feel that I have, what I am today, where, where I've gone today, have been based mostly on uh, instinct, animal instinct. Eastwood's method feels reminiscent of fellow Western director John Ford. 11, take one. Take one, there's more, more than one take, will I? Shoot. We rehearsed it a lot, technically. But every time we would get to the position and sit down, Ford would cut the rehearsal. He didn't want to dissipate the emotion, get it in the first take, get the emotion, the first emotion, get the fresh emotion, all that. Fellain ain't got a soul of his own, just a little piece of a big soul. Non-professional actors can be a gift to some directors. Sean Baker and the Safdie brothers frequently mix actors with non-professionals. It's the connection of the two, you know, having actors working with these first-time actors and what they both bring. You know, I, for Eric in particular, he's in that scene and he's working with guys who are tough guys, you know, and he has to come in and act real with them and they have to act with him. You think I'm stupid? You think I'm stupid, Howard? Mike Lee, another hyper-realist, creates limitations by not giving his ensemble cast a full script and instead has weeks of intense rehearsals and improvs to flesh out the characters. What always happens with my films is that I, I go into rehearsal for a stretch of time and work with the actors to investigate characters, relationships and bring into existence the 
possible potential putative world of the film that I'm going to make. And there's always a certain point in the proceedings when it becomes just clear enough to me what th my main conception is. Here, withholding information about the film they are working on allows actors to experience their character's emotional life rather than their entire story free from anticipation and expectations. Mike and myself were absolutely on the same line, going towards some end, which I wasn't sure what it was, but the process was taking me there. And I wasn't frustrated or going, oh, what's, gonna, what's it gonna be, what's gonna happen? Terence Malick goes one step further by having an even less structured process, attempting to have his actors truly live on screen. Like a documentarian, he throws actors into real environments and collects countless takes to capture their emotions as they occur organically. His highly spiritual cinema seeks to reflect the ineffable. You don't know all the other lines. You don't know all the other characters, how it's all gonna end. You don't even know how it's gonna end for you. So why, why do you have to know what's, how it's gonna end for them? I don't have any problem at all working in this, this way. This is the way life is. I don't believe that directors know from their debut film what exactly their process is with actors. I'm sure each one intuitively discovered their own unique approach based on their innate sensibility. But I hope giving you an overview of the different methods helps to at least show that there's no right or wrong way to approach this craft. It all depends on the effect you're trying to achieve and what feels right in the moment. Filmmaking is like any other vocation. It requires a combination of methods and disciplines. Personally, I always feel like I never know enough and always think I can develop my skills further. That's why Skillshare is a great resource. It's an online learning community with thousands of classes available in filmmaking, design, technology, entrepreneurship, and general lifestyle guidance. I'd like to specifically recommend filmmaker and YouTuber Dan Mace's classes on telling a story through video. It's an insightful step-by-step -step look into the fundamental skills that truly hook and resonate with an audience. You don't need a big budget or fancy equipment to develop what should be a first priority of filmmakers, storytelling. Skillshare is less than $10 a month, and the first thousand people who use the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership.